<sighs> well, let's give this a try. My name's Trev and I run a website called Metroscapes. Now, I had planned on making my debut here on YouTube, kind of explaining what all of that is, but it's not going anywhere fast. So here I am changing tack. I won't be making any video game videos, reaction videos, or other compilations. I actually get out there and I touch grass. Like, literally. And concrete and pavement and steel. I explore a lot of where natural and built environments collide. In this video, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to look back on everything that I did for my website back in 2023. A year in review kind of thing. Instead of doing it in a blog format this time though, I'm going to do it in a vlog. Does anyone use the word vlog anymore? Anyway, let's go. So for walks, I did about 11 this year. That's only about four more than 2022. Uh, despite that though, I covered almost twice the distance, about 250 kilometers. That's about 23 kilometers per walk on average. And that alone is a record for me. Usually I was mid or high teens, so that's pretty big. A couple of those walks were in Toronto. Uh, both were railway walks. And one was actually documenting the shutdown of the Scarborough RT. Some of you might know it as Line 3. It was scheduled to shut down anyway in about November. But then there was an accident in the summer. I think it was sometime in July. Anyway, uh, that happened and they kind of looked at it and said, well, there's no real point in trying to figure all of this out and try to make it work again for two, three months. So they just shut it down. It was a bit of an early end. So anyway, I got to document some of that. Three of the walks were in Guelph. Uh, two of them were pretty much all the rail lines in the city. Uh, and the third was the Hanlon Creek watershed. Uh, this meant a lot to me. Uh, I had spent a lot of my undergrad in Preservation Park, where a lot of the tributaries of Hanlon Creek come together. There's like one particular area where it's like kind of like an old growth bog kind of thing. So got to retrace my steps there. But I also saw a part of the forest I hadn't been to before. The other six walks were a variety of things across Hamilton. A couple rail lines, I also did the shoreline way out in the east end, and I did three riverine type walks. The riverine ones in particular are pretty awesome because I got to see a lot of waterfalls. Now, you know, don't listen to them when they say stick to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to. Waterfalls are pretty awesome to chase. Uh, within reason. Now all of these walks together pushed me to an all-time total of 2,500 kilometers across four cities in eight years. Now that was a nice milestone. I wish it were higher but it's not bad for a hobby when you have a full-time job and a young family. You can only do so much. Now for actual projects I refreshed my Toronto Railways page. This had been kind of sitting for a while and been on my to-do list for quite some time. So I was able to refresh that, especially now that all of the pictures from my walks are locally hosted on my website and made things easier and to enrich. I also published railway pages for three of the other cities that I cover. I also refreshed a bunch of projects in Hamilton. I did all of the hydro corridors across the city, the shoreline, which I had walked pretty much the other half of, and I also redid the watersheds. By refreshing the watersheds project, I was able to set the foundation to maybe make a new project, a standalone project, documenting those waterfalls. There's already a couple web pages out there doing it, but, you know, I want to put my own touch on it and make it a little bit easier to figure out where to go. I also refreshed Guelph watersheds. I refreshed Guelph neighborhoods as well. Neighborhoods is this weird project that I kind of got sitting off to the side and I haven't really figured out what to do with it. 
I just made one for Toronto way back when, and the neighborhood pages on my website actually generate a lot of traffic. So that's nice. And that's why I haven't really got rid of them. I may have an idea to what to do with them in the future. We'll see. I also refreshed the hydro corridors in Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge with hesitation because that was done without any parcel data. Now for other stuff that I did in 2023, this was the first full year of running the website with all of the content migrated over from my walks. It's going well. It does a lot to help making loading content on other pages way easier. So that's really nice. It just makes each page a little bit richer when you can see a bunch of related photos. It's also nice not to bounce folks around too much between links. That's kind of the style I've been going for. The other thing, maybe not so related to the website, is I've kind of stepped away from the bird site and transitioned over to making all my social media posts on Blue Sky. If you haven't heard of Blue Sky, it is kind of a Twitter knockoff. It was actually a project that was started by Jack Dorsey in Twitter once upon a time, and now it's becoming this different thing. It's all built on some different protocols that will one day allow for federation where different social media websites can communicate with each other instead of you having to take all your stuff moving over here because you don't like what your, that platform is doing. Much like Twitter and everything that I've gone through in the past year. As for my blog, um, not too active. I did one post about tourism on Ontario. There doesn't seem to be a lot of work or coordinated effort at least to highlight our natural spaces, especially in the urban areas. And the other post kind of gets to the last part of this 2023 in review, which is the next chapter, where Metroscapes is going next. That walk I talked about in Toronto where I was following the Scarborough RT, I actually took that opportunity to borrow a GoPro from a friend because I've wanted to live stream my walks or at least capture them on video somehow for a long time. And I had an idea in my head of what that was gonna look like. Actually, I have it right here. Once I get it untangled from everything, I have this. And this is where your GoPro hooks up to, and then you use the straps and strap it on your shoulder. And then you can stream the walk. You can record it on a GoPro. But I didn't actually know if that was gonna work out. I didn't know if the GoPro would last long enough. I didn't know if it would be too bouncy. I just, I just needed a proof of concept. And the results came back awesome. I, I took a couple extra steps, like I went out and I bought an extra battery pack or, and all that stuff, and it worked. So now I just have to go get a GoPro on my own, and so that's some money there. I also realized that making a video when you're walking for five, six hours, it means a lot of space, a lot of data. And when you extrapolate that with how many walks that I could do in a year, we're talking gigabytes, multiple gigabytes, multiple terabytes. There's a couple other things that I want to try and figure out. If I can do that for 2024, that was supposed to be my prerequisite for expanding to a new region. And that new region is going to be the West greater Toronto area. So we're talking Burlington, Oakville, Milton, Georgetown, Mississauga, and Brampton. That's a huge area. That's almost like Toronto and Hamilton and Guelph combined. So that's gonna be a big area for me to cover. I already have a ton of plans, like a hundred different walks planned out. And I've also been chipping away at the supporting projects and data, but again, the scale is huge, so that's going to take me a little bit of time on top of figuring out the video thing, but that is my goal for 2024 in Metroscapes. And that about wraps it up. So I'll leave it there and wish you all the best, and hopefully see you again soon.